So apparently what we need for the new year is a ridiculous Norwegian action comedy with cars and romance. Asphalt Burning is now available, but should you be watching? In an effort to win back his fiance, Roy must race a rival suitor at the Nürburgring. Okay, so this is a movie that you kind of have to go with if you're going to be able to finish it or even get any enjoyment from it. This group of friends has an American car club in Norway, and in their tradition, when a member of the group is going to get married, there's a race to the bride, and the winner, well, wins. Because they're all friends, the assumption is that the groom-to-be will win, but when Roy races up the mountain towards Sylvia, someone else races towards the finish with the intent on winning. Roy is foiled and challenges a rematch, so he and his team of friends travel to Germany's Nürburgring racetrack for the challenge. Now, there are many reasons why this doesn't work and why it should not be enjoyable. First are the special effects. There are points where cars are racing or leave the ground, and the CGI that is utilized is so bad, it looks like we're watching a Sharknado movie. I'm not even criticizing the unrealisticness of some of the stunts. I mean, I can go along with them, but wow, the graphics are just terrible. The story is also full of conveniences that allow our characters to progress from one challenge to the next when it really shouldn't happen. They encounter obstacles that just pop up, but just as quickly and conveniently as those challenges occur, a solution that is just as ridiculously timed presents itself. The characters are pretty ill-defined, at least from a development standpoint. We know Roy is a bit stunted, and maybe a little bit of arrested development is going on, or just a massive desire to hold on to his hobby above all. But aside from that, we don't have much insight into his life or those of his friends or family. His friends are quirky and odd, but they're very loyal, so they kind of work in the grand scheme of the story. There's a situation that occurs towards the third act of the film that introduces a character who apparently has some sort of issue with Roy. It makes absolutely no sense and feels like there is a massive hole in the story. There's some history between the two based on dialogue, but nothing that we have been shown supports that. <laughs> well, come to find out, the title Asphalt Burning is not the original title. The real title is Borning 3, and guess what? It's the third in the series. So of course it feels like there's a ton missing, because at least some of these characters have already been developed in previous films. I'm coming into a story that's already been occurring, so when it feels like I've been plopped into the middle of a conversation, I really have been. Unfortunately, Netflix in the US doesn't have the first two movies available, at least at the time of this recording. So aside from that massive revelation that I discovered after seeing the movie, is there any reason to watch this? Well, surprisingly, I had fun with it. Like I said, there are a lot of reasons to not like this or why this shouldn't work. But I like some of the quirkiness with Roy's friends. There's this running gag with his name that is cute. I mean, it's predictable, but it's not unenjoyable. And at points, this reminded me of movies like It's a Mad, 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 Mad World or The Cannonball Run, mixed with a little bit of Gone in 60 Seconds and The Fast and the Furious. And funny enough, the final race in the movie was exciting. I mean, I found myself anxious to see what would happen. I mean, I was pretty sure of what the outcome's gonna be, but I was still having a good time watching the cars race around the track. And there is a love story hidden in this movie somewhere. I don't think it's developed enough to really make you invested in their relationship, aside from wanting to root for Roy because he's the protagonist and a fairly nice guy. And the nice guy wins, right? Right? So you might begin to compare this, like I kind of did, to a Fast and a Furious movie. And it does have a few of those elements. Obviously, there's the cars and races, but there's also the sense of family. And that's pretty much about where the comparison can stop. The Fast franchise turns it all up, and they work with a seemingly much larger budget, so everything is way more polished. This is a quick hour and 40 minute watch, and I didn't get bored. I mean, I rolled my eyes several times and certainly recognized the ridiculousness of what I was watching, but I chuckled through some of it, and I found myself caring slightly for the characters, even though I barely knew them. If you're looking for something lighthearted with some action, albeit rough and unpolished at times, this can be a fun watch. I'm curious to see how the previous two movies are and how they would affect my feelings on this one, but as it stands for now, I only have this one to go on. There's no sex and nudity, some profanity, and some violence. I give Asphalt Burning three out of five couches. So by chance, have you seen the other two Burning movies? How are they? And if not, do you have a favorite car-themed movie? I know that's a pretty wide genre, but let me know in the comments below. I still absolutely love the Top Gear series, the original ones with Jeremy, James, and Richard, because that's the only one that really counts. But let me know what yours is in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. 
Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for catching with me.